In mid-June, Gail and I took a vacation in Utah. First, we visited Diane and Barry Strawn in Cedar City, who showed us around, starting with an amazing geological formation called the Grand Staircase. This is a very high plateau at over 10,000 feet. Point Supreme is the entrance to Cedar Breaks, a national monument in Utah. It is a fantastically eroded sandstone in the shape of an amphitheater. Looking down the valley, you can see Cedar City where we came from. We walked the Ramparts Trail, which was lined with beautiful bluebells and some white flowers, Indian paintbrush, but also stark patterns like this tree. Along the trail, we observed many fantastic shapes carved into the soft sandstone. The visibility must have been a hundred miles. Further along the trail, we went towards Spectra Point, visible here at the top of the picture. These are shapes along the trail to Spectra Point, and here is Gale approaching the point. These shapes are called hoodoos, although we did not know of them yet. On the way back, we see again the fantastic shapes from reverse angle, and also great views of the valley in the distance. Next, we went to a mountain called Brian Head. This is the view from the top. This is the view driving down the mountain. We had lunch in the Briar Head Lodge. Our hosts then took us to Perowin Gap, a site of many interesting Indian petroglyphs. These are prehistoric images and their meaning is unclear. After a short rest, Barry took me for a ride in his pristine 1965 Corvette. We went to the airport. I love this car so much I had to have my picture taken with it. This is in front of Barry's hangar, where Barry keeps his sport plane this is a Czech-made Sting Cruiser, I believe. A beautiful machine. We then went to the end of the runway, where the Air Force was conducting touch-and-go landing tests of their tanker aircraft, a modified and modernized Boeing 707. Later, we visited the campus of the Southern Utah University. It was getting dark by that time, but the campus is really beautiful. We are grateful to our hosts for providing us such a rich experience. It was a full day. Next day, we drive to Zion Canyon. The road provides interesting views. Zion Canyon resembles Yosemite with great vertical cliffs. This formation is called the Three Patriarchs. And this is the Sentinel. Wild turkeys by the river didn't want to have anything to do with me. There's Gale on the opposite shore. This is the East Temple and the canyon really does resemble Yosemite here. We are off the valley floor and Gale has a little bit heebie-jeebies because we are climbing fast. The Overlook Trail is steep and full of switchbacks, but it's wide and safe. Gale catches a little rest in the shade. We are much higher in the canyon now and spectacular vistas open up before us. Strange shape and steep canyons are below, and the scale is immense. 
You can barely see the bus on the road by the river. We got as high as the base of this giant red cliff, looking straight up. About a thousand feet off the valley floor, there was this narrow but walkable canyon called the Narrows. The trail continues another thousand feet up to the overlook. The sandstone has amazing color and texture. It's interesting to see the trail from the top. The shuttle bus is waiting on the valley floor. A few more shots of the cliffs as we are descending. It's comforting to see the cliff from the valley floor. Next we went on the river trail. It's a relatively level trail with spectacular rock formations on both sides of the canyon. This one is called the Great White Throne. The canyon gets narrower at this point and there are beaches along the river. But the canyon continues to offer spectacular views as it gets narrower. The canyon narrows to where you have to walk in the river to continue. It was hot and many people appreciated the opportunity to cool off at the end of the trail. Tired but happy, it was time to go. On the way out of the park, we passed this amazing arch. The way to Bryce Canyon took us through the Red Canyon. Unfortunately, our car broke down, so we got to see the Red Canyon again from the tow truck. In the afternoon, we started our hike at Bryce Point. It was a trail along the rim of the canyon. In the background is the Pioneer Plateau at 11,000 feet elevation, the highest plateau in North America. The canyon is full of hoodoos, spire-like structures that are quite interesting and unique. The hoodoos play on your imagination. Some places look like trees in a forest. Others are more anthropomorphic. Even faces. This formation looks like terracotta soldiers. This is the biggest hoodoo I've ever seen. Here's some more snaps along the canyon rim as we walk down the 2.5 mile trail. I guess I should put some music here, but maybe next time. These two look like the ones at Cedar Breaks. This is the Bryce Canyon bottom with some trails visible. At the end of the canyon, Ebenezer Bryce founded a community and named it Tropic. The coloration is spectacular. The chipmunk was not afraid. Formation of hoodoos start with erosion, forming structures called fins. When backlit, these fins create a sublime scene. Frost wedging creates arches, then windows. It's an intermediate step in the creation of hoodoos. The arches eventually collapse, leaving freestanding columns that are hoodoos. It was nearing sunset and we went down the canyon a little bit on Navajo Trail. It was appropriate to celebrate sunset at Sunset Point with a bottle of fine wine and our friends David and Miles Murphy, whom we met 
in the park. We found that wine and cliffs go together well. This concludes our excellent trip. Thank you for watching.